Hello, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the medulla oblongata. Uh, medulla oblongata is located right about here under pons and midbrain, uh, and they're also located in front of the cerebellum. And just for orientation's sake, uh, the spinal cord is located right about here. So let's look at the development of the central nervous system really quick so that we understand how the or where the uh, different structures come from. Uh, in week four, that's how the central nervous looks, uh, system looks like. You're going to have the rhombencephalon, the mesencephalon, and prosencephalon. And down here, you're going to have the spinal cord. So uh, week five, on the other hand, that's how, it's, uh, that's how the central nervous is going to look like. You can see that the uh, rhombencephalon and prosencephalon is going to di uh, divide. The uh, rhombencephalon is going to be divided into the mielencephalon and metencephalon, where it's going to later on uh, develop into pons, cerebellum, and medulla oblongata. The mesencephalon is just going to stay like that, it's, it's called the midbrain. And the uh, prosencephalon is going to be divided into uh, telencephalon and deencephalon. So our focus in this video is going to be down here on medulla oblongata. So uh, if we go ahead and look at the uh, anterior external surface first, uh, so here we have the uh, the anterior surface of medulla oblongata, and up here we're gonna have pons. Down here we're gonna have the spinal cord. So um, the first structure I want to highlight is the fissura mediana anterior, located in the middle here. And on either side of it, you can have sulcus anterior lateralis. And if you go uh, more even more laterally, you can have the sulcus posterior lateralis. So on either side of fissura mediana anterior, you're going to have the medullary pyramids. And the medullary pyramid is going to contain what is called the corticospinal tract. I'm going to talk more about the corticospinal tract later on. I'm going to talk about the cross-section. Uh, but for now, I want to mention that the corticospinal tract has some fibers, as you see here. And those fibers go down and crosses at the at the lower part of the medulla oblongata and that cross fibers is called the uh, degussatio pyramidum degussatio means uh, crossing of fibers so uh, that is the uh, pyramid uh, the medulla, medullary pyramids uh, and if you go even more laterally between the fissura anterior lateralis and uh, the sulcus anterior lateralis and posterior lateralis you can have uh, what is called oliva Oliva is going to contain some tracts, the oliver tract. Now that is the structures on the anterior external surface. And on the external surface, you're going to have some nerves coming out. On uh, the sulcus anterior lateralis, you're going to have the 12th cranial nerve coming out. It's going to be called the uh, hypoglossal nerve. That's the 12th uh, cranial nerve. This goes out on the uh, sulcus anterior lateralis. And then on the sulcus posterior lateralis, you're going to have the and uh, 9th, 10th, and 11th cranial nerve coming out. That's the nervus glossopharyngeus, that's this one, and uh, nervus vagus, and nervus uh, accessorius, the accessory nerve. So uh, that is the anterior external surface. So let's go ahead and look at the posterior external surface. You're going to have what is called the circus medianus posterior this time. This is on the posterior side. And on the posterior side, you can have uh, some different structures. So the first one is called, called the uh, fasciculus gracilis, and it's going to be located on either side of the sulcus medianus posterior. On fas uh, fasciculus gracilis, it's going to have the tubercle on the top, tuberculum gracilis. And if you go or even more lateral to it, you can have the fasciculus cuneatus with its uh, tubercle, the tuberculum cu uh, cuneatus. So that is the uh, structures on the posterior side of the medulla oblongata. Now, if you go even superiorly, you're going to find another structure, which is called the fossa rhomboidea. I'm going to talk more about the fossa rhomboidea later on. Uh, but what I wanted to highlight those two structures you can see right here. And those are called the uh, pedicleus cerebralis inferior. Uh, the, those are the pedicles that... that connect to the cerebellum. If you imagine the cerebellum is going to be located above or right behind the um, the medulla oblongata and pons about here. So in this picture we have removed the cerebellum. These two pedicles connect to the cerebellum. So that is the external surfaces on the medulla oblongata. Now let's go over and talk about the internal structures of medulla oblongata. Now, I just wanted to remind you that gray matter always contains cell bodies. So whenever we talk about the gray matter, you're going to have nuclei. Every structure in gray matter is going to have nuclei in it. 
while white matter on the other hand is gonna always have nerve fibers so the white matter is gonna have tract so if we go ahead and cut the medulla oblongata right about here somewhere you're gonna see that it looks like this and just for orientation's sake let's go go through the external external structures again now here you see the fissura mediana anterior and uh, lateral to it you can see the pyramids and then the oliva and then on the posterior side you can see the sulcus medianus posterior and the tuberculum gracilis and tuberculum cuneatus on the, either side of it uh, and you're also going to see the pedicles that connect with the cerebellum the uh, pediculus cerebralis uh, inferior so uh, that is the uh, external structure so now let's go ahead and go ahead and start with the gray matter first remember i said that the gray matter only contains nuclei and the blue color i just want to say that the blue color means that they are ascending tracks this means that the signal goes from the body or from the spinal cord up to uh, upwards uh, to your brain so uh, that that's the blue col color represent ascending tracts uh, so here you see the nuclei. The first one is the nucleus gracilis, located in the tuberculum gracilis. Uh, this one is responsible for deep sensation of um, of muscles that are located on the lower trunk or lower limbs. Then you have the nucleus cuneatus, which is located in tuberculum cuneatus. Uh, this one is also going to be responsible for deep sensation on the muscles uh, located on the upper trunk and upper limbs. And then you're going to have the a nucleus olivaris that's uh, the, at the new level of nucleus olivaris that's where two important tracks are going to start uh, going to have the tractus olivospinalis and tractus olivocerebralis the nucleus olivaris is going to be responsible for keeping your balance actually so the next structure on the gray matter is the retinocular formation you see right here the retinocular formation is going to be kind of a network of cells and fibers in the spinal cord and the brainstem. Uh, those are going to control the uh, conscious movement and the and some vital functions like sleeping, walking, eating. So another thing you're going to find on the gray matter is the cranial nerves, which is located in the rhomboid fossa. Uh, and again, I'm going to talk more about the rhomboid fossa later. So that is the gray matter. Now, if we go over to the white matter, the first thing I wanted to talk about is this: these fibers right here that goes out from the uh, nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus. Uh, those fibers are gonna go out from these nuclei and then cross the um, the medulla oblongata to the other side, and then start ascending again. And those fibers are gonna called fibra arcuata interna, or the internal arcuate fibers. And since we have internal arcuate fibers, we're also going to have external arcuate fibers. Um, those are going to go out from the nucleus gracilis, and then those are called those fibers are called superficial fi uh, fibers because they go superficial like that, and then they're going to continue to the cerebellum through the pedicles right here. And uh, those fibers are going to call the fibra arcuata externa, the external arcuate uh, fiber. Alright, so the internal arcuate fiber is going to go across the medulla oblongata and then continue upwards while the external arcuate fibers are externally because they exit the, uh, the brainstem and then goes to the cerebellum. So that is those fibers. Now let's go ahead and add the same fibers on the other side. And here you see the fibers, the uh, internal arcuate fibers, they cross in the middle and form what is called the uh, decusatio leminitsi medialis here in the middle. And remember I said that decusatio is a uh, crossing of, of fibers. Now remember I said that the uh, internal arcuate fiber is going to continue upwards after crossing. Um, the area where they where they start turning upwards, that area is going to call the lemniscus medialis, and that's going to form a tract called bulbotalamic tract. The white matter, on the other hand, is going to have uh, different structures. We'll start with the, those uh, three structures. Uh, now, this one right here is called the tractus spinothalamicus. And tractus spinothalamicus is going to be responsible for uh, temperature sensation. And while on, on those two, on the other hand, the tractus spinocerebralis, here we have the tractus spinocerebralis posterior and tractus spinocerebralis anterior, the same on the other side here. So the fibers of tractus spinocerebellaris are going to continue to the cerebellum. That's why they have the uh, cerebellaris uh, in the name. 
So the fibers of the uh, tractus spinus cerebellaris posterior are going to continue to the cerebellum through the pediculus uh, cerebellaris um, inferior, while the uh, fibers of the tractus spinus cerebellaris anterior are going to continue up through pons and the midbrain and then go to the cerebellum through the uh, pediculus cerebellaris superior. So that's how they enter the cerebellum. So that is those three tracts. Now the next ones are the descending tracts. And so descending tracts are going to be uh, highlighted in red. And descending means that they go, the, those fibers or those nerves goes from the uh, brain down to the spinal cord and then to the muscles. So the first thing is those tracts right here, the tractus corticospinalis. And remember I talked about the tractus corticospinalis earlier in this video where the uh, fibers of this tract goes down and then crosses at the lower part of the medulla oblongata. Uh, you're going to have some fibers on the same tract that's not going to cross at all. It's just going to go uh, down uh, continue downwards in a straight line. And this tract is going to be responsible for voluntary movement of the trunk and limbs. Uh, so the next tract is located at the same place actually. This one is called the tractus corticonuclearis. And this tract is responsible for voluntary movement of the head and the neck. So the next descending tracts I want to talk about is these two, the tractus vestibulospinalis and tractus rubrospinalis. And the last tracts I want to talk about is these tracts right here, these three. The, you have the tractus rubrospinalis right about here. And the, these two are the tractus tectospinalis. Tectospinalis are going to be responsible for uh, reflexes that are concerned with he uh, hearing, the, the hearing uh, reflexes. Uh, and then we have these two right here, the fasciculus longitudinalis medialis. And that was the last structures in this video and I hope this was helpful.